All right, welcome to our broadcast today. Let's now give you the latest from the world of business. Now, public relations has transformed considerably with the advent of COVID-19. Customers and clients now expect digitization in all aspects. Brenda Kerubo speaks with the chief executive officer of Newmark Group on the impact of COVID-19 uh, on public relations and how technology is transforming the PR sector. Take a look. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. We really appreciate Gilbert. Welcome to the program. How exactly has public relations changed the virus? Thank you, Brenda. And it's very nice to hang out with you uh, today. I'm a big fan of the work that you do. You're a big voice for the entrepreneurship and economic sector in, in Africa and in Kenya specifically. So thank you for having me. The way this pandemic has affected us as a profession is number one, it has affected how we communicate and how we foster communications and relationships. Let me just give you an example. If you are an organization, you might want to communicate why you exist to your various stakeholders. You might want to explain some of the things that you do, some of your programs. But now COVID-19 brings into the picture a situation where your audiences are so busy trying to stay away from COVID-19. They are distracted by this thing that can affect their health, that can potentially kill them, kill their loved ones. It's going to be hard for them to actually connect with your message. So you have to go back to the drawing board and instruct us, your partners and your professionals to rethink how and what you should communicate. So it has affected us in terms of how we practice and the substance of what we do. On the other hand, it also has affected us personally because now we are isolated, we are not going to the office. So that, that has implications because when you are creating conversations, you need to connect with your colleagues, you need to have meetings with some of your uh, partners, some of your stakeholders, some of your suppliers. And this has meant that we had to shift, the, to shift this uh, digitally and go online. It actually has affected us more than you may think because now we have to have the tools to work this way like everyone else. So luckily this hasn't been a big problem because like in our case we haven't had a big challenge but it simply means you need an adaptable team. You need your people to be able to learn. You need uh, as, a, as, a, as a professional to adapt quickly and to learn how to use these tools. Talking about clients, uh, how exactly has their behavior changed? What are they focusing on now that they never used to do pre-pandemic? So the first thing that happened with, with clients was they froze. I don't know if you've heard about the uh, freeze, uh, flight and fight sort of response that you get in crisis situations. So we've definitely seen a bit of that with some organizations. Some of them would decide, let's freeze everything, let's just stop and observe. So in the first few months, there was a lull uh, in terms of activity levels. In the f in, perhaps in the second quarter after the pandemic was announced, after COVID-19 was uh, announced as a pandemic, that's when some organizations started coming out and saying, hey, we don't really know what to do with this situation, but we want to know what the situation is. So that's when you started seeing a lot of uh, research and analysis done by some of us in the public relations field. Some of us had to partner with other agencies or other organizations that do research to bring us the data, give us analytics, and then we would go and have a conversation with these organizations. They have been very welcoming and very open to learning what's happening with their audiences. But now, in this particular situation where we are in now, Many of the organizations are more comfortable with the information they have because the science around the pandemic has now become a bit clearer. Uh, the feelings and emotions in the public has become more or less evident because, for example, right now we know publics and, and audiences want more authority. They want guidance. They want transparency. Uh, they, they want uh, organizations that are more socially oriented. It's not just enough to be financially successful as an organization to gain someone's trust. You actually have to care about social things. So we are seeing all these insights influencing how organizations are doing things. And we are seeing also more activity moving online. Will we ever see a scenario where uh, the physical space will be replaced and now we'll go fully online or we are talking about an outlook where they will go hand in hand together? 
It is very difficult uh, to replace physical contact for many reasons. Uh, number one, there are generational reasons. There are entire generations that grew up on physical interactions. And those people might always yearn for that physical, physical interaction. So we are going to continue seeing a drive towards bringing back the physical interaction. And that is why the world will do everything possible to find that vaccine and that cure. And that will come. That said, it's, it's evident that the, we have tasted blood, as they say. We have tasted the wonder of remote working, for example, which is wonderful for families, which is wonderful for mothers with young children, which is wonderful in many ways. There are some challenges. Um, you know, there are many memes and jokes out there about how you know some husbands are complaining that they don't want to stay at home; they want to be at work, and how um, uh, mothers, you know, perhaps are thinking otherwise. Um, I was going to, to share a few anecdotes, but I prefer my friends would kill me. I prefer not to go that direction. But just to say that um, we are definitely going to see a more hybrid workspace going forward. That is a definite guarantee. Whether it will be more physical, more hybrid, uh, it leaves to, you know, it remains to be seen uh, depending on the progression of the pandemic. And what will public relations look like in the next five years because of this pandemic? So um, in terms of what public relations will look like, I, I would like to just mention three P's that public relations have to, um, public relations practitioners, agencies and professionals have to really rethink. The first P is the one I call people. We have to uh, reinvent ourselves as practitioners. Number one, we have to make ourselves, our agencies, our teams, very agile. We have to have a culture of learning on the go. And this has not necessarily been the case because I think uh, for many of us, public relations was, was this clear cut and defined type of practice where you do certain things a certain way. Uh, however, we are going into a territory where we have to really rethink what we know. For, for instance, the channels that we used to uh, used to create conversations are being redefined. Uh, the, the types of activities that we used to use to create conversations are changing. Uh, a media relations professional, for example, would organize a press conference. What will the press conference of two years from now look like? It's definitely not going to look like what we have now. We'll probably have more technology involved. We'll have the speaker being in a studio. Uh, we'll have, for example, even things like artificial intelligence. We'll probably have 3D printing uh, being used in different ways to make sure that people across the world are connected virtually. In a looking for, I'm looking at that P element being very important. People have to learn to learn. People have to learn to be agile and to adapt on the go. That's, that's really big. The second, the second P is going to be product and services. So not only in our field, but across all sectors. Products will have to be um, redefined because consumers, and this is according to our research, consumers are looking for more than just a product. That has been the case in the past, but it's going to be accelerated. They are going to look for transparency. They are going to look for safety. They are going to want to know, is this product safe? Where is it coming from? So um, for us as practitioners in public relations, we will have to become very good at communicating such information in a way that is meaningful to various stakeholders. The third P is process. Um, and this not only affects public relations, but it's going to really affect um, all sectors. Process means how we do everything that we do will have to evolve. It will have to evolve and it's connected to the other uh, P's in the sense that we are no longer going to be able to um, continue doing business as usual. For example, technology has to be center stage in everything that we do. And what kind of a leader will you be in 2021? Because the pandemic will, will still sadly be here amid the vaccine, but it's, the effects will still be felt. 
Definitely I'll be an activist leader, I think. I, I will be shouting at the, on the rooftops, telling all our organization uh, partners, all our clients, and all everyone around us to really be the human they want their neighbor to be. Uh, and, and not just to have financial considerations in, 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 in what they do, but also to have social purposes, probably a higher goal, um, way above um, financial considerations. Because I think when you are going through a crisis like this, it doesn't even make sense um, to, to focus on financial considerations um, when there's so much happening around you. So I think for me that will probably be the leadership uh, activism I'll be uh, carrying out. And the research we have carried out actually shows the brands that do that are going to carry the next few years, are going to uh, benefit not just in terms of having an impact, a positive impact, but they are also going to actually uh, be beneficially rewarded uh, from a sustainability and financial point of view. All right, now we want to take the discussion on matters taxation and joining us from our town studio is Dr. Kaka.